Hello, I'm Sally Perk, and I'm going to review the article High Frequency Verse in Academic Spoken English, Corpora and Learners, written by T. Ng Yen Tang. I hope this video will give you some insight on English education. High frequency words are the most commonly used vocabularies in general conversation and everyday language such as newspapers, telephone conversations, emails, and TV programs. These lexical items constitute the most frequent 2,000 words of British national corpus and corpus of contemporary American English. As you can see below, words such as think, know, and good are some examples of high-frequency words. EAP, employee assistance program teachers and course designers usually make rash judgment that students already have sufficient word knowledge before entering EAP programs. This assumption leads many EAP courses to mainly focus on academic written English vocabularies that are not high-frequency words. For example, the academic word list by Coxhead is widely used for EAP programs, but it doesn't have high-frequency words in it. However, students have to understand both reading materials and academic spoken English such as lectures, seminars, lab discussions, and tutorials but they have difficulty in understanding academic spoken English and the main reason is lack of vocabulary knowledge. This indicates that words in academic written English out of high frequency words are not enough to comprehend academic spoken English. According to Dan, Coxhead, and Webb, high frequency words take up more than 70% of the most frequent words in academic spoken English. This brings up the need for looking into the relative importance of high-frequency words in academic spoken and written English, not only focusing on vocabularies common in academic written English. English is a widely used medium of lessons at institutions around the world, but we need to consider students' varied vocabulary knowledge, and they may have insufficient knowledge of high-frequency words. There are some previous studies regarding the lacking knowledge about high-frequency words. According to Akbarian, more than 76% of 112 EAP learners in Iran had not have knowledge of the most frequent 2,000 words in general service list by West. Also, Matthews and Chang's study represented that 167 EAP learners in China had about only 77% receptive knowledge of high-frequency words. This article challenges EAP teachers and course designers' assumption that learners have enough knowledge of high-frequency words before entering programs and such as three research questions. First, what percent of words in academic spoken English are high-frequency words? Second, what percent of words in academic written English are high-frequency words? Third, to what extent do EAP students know high-frequency words when entering EAP program? In order to answer the first and second questions, researchers used the range program for corpus analysis. And for the third question, vocabulary test was carried out to check the high-frequency word knowledge of EAP students. The corpus analysis was conducted by using the range program for investigating the proportion of high-frequency words in academic spoken and written English. And BNC and COCA 2000 list was used for indicating high-frequency words. Academic English in this article is represented by Deng et al. The academic spoken corpus and the academic written corpus. These tables are the composition of the academic spoken and written corpus. As you can see, each corpus has more than 13 million words and consists of four academic fields, which are hard pure, hard applied, soft pure, and soft applied. Sources of the academic spoken English were brought from lectures, seminars, lab discussions, and tutorials, and materials in the academic written English were chosen from textbooks, journal articles, book chapters, students' writing, and research reports of institutions around the world. In order to answer the third research question, 
authors tested the vocabulary knowledge of EAP students at university in Vietnam. The number of participants is 66, and they were first-year students aged 18 on the one-year EAP program. The updated vocabulary level test developed by Web, Sasao, and Balance was used to measure students' knowledge of high-frequency words. It consists of 10 clusters, and each cluster has 6 words and 3 definitions. Students are required to match form and meaning, and they have to get at least 29 correct answers out of 30 to master a level. The updated vocabulary levels test originally has 5 levels, but authors used only the first and second thousand word levels that represent high frequency words. The rest three levels, 3000 to 5000, represent lower frequency words. So let's move on to the results of corpus analysis in answer to the first and second research questions. As you can see, the high frequency words took up 88.61% of academic spoken corpus and 76.39% of academic written corpus. This indicates high frequency words made up a much larger proportion of words in academic spoken English than in academic written English. Let's look at the excerpts from the academic spoken and written corpus. Unmarked words are high frequency words and words in bold are not high frequency words. As you can see, high frequency words make a larger part of academic spoken English than that of academic written English. This means high frequency words have more essential words for understanding in academic spoken English than in academic written English. These are some reasons for the important role of high frequency words in academic spoken English and let's take a closer look at these reasons one by one. First, technical concepts in academic spoken English are usually made up of high frequency words. For example, the term large input consists of two high frequency words, large and input. Teachers tend to take examples from daily life for explanation and this leads them to mainly use high frequency words. Second possible reason is the density and abstractness of information under real-time circumstances. Speakers have to transfer such information quickly and easily, and listeners have to comprehend the information quickly. The pressure under these real-time situations makes speakers mainly use high-frequency words. And last, the function of academic speech can be the reason for the importance of high-frequency words in academic spoken English. One example is classroom management that gives students some important details about courses and activities. Looking at the example, the teacher gave information about the course and only four words, website, standpoint, syllabus, and quiz are not high-frequency words in here. For helping students understand better, teachers usually deliver the information by mainly using high-frequency words. The third research question about the EAP learners' word knowledge can be explained by the results of the vocabulary test. As you can see in the table, the number of students who mastered the high-frequency words is only 13 out of 66 and this is less than 20% of the students. 39 students had knowledge of only the most frequent thousand words, and 14 students, that is more than 20%, had not mastered even the most frequent thousand words. Based on this result, it would be more relevant to consider that EAP learners, especially in EFL context, lack knowledge of high-frequency words when entering the program. To sum up, high-frequency words play an important role for comprehension of academic spoken English. However, a significant number of EAP students have short knowledge of high-frequency words. 
This means the necessity to have knowledge of high frequency words for students. And the author suggests the academic spoken word list as a solution that teachers can use. The academic spoken word list, or ASWL, is a useful resource to help students who have lacking knowledge of high frequency words to deal with academic spoken English. It was developed based on a 13 million words corpus of academic spoken English and consists of 1741 frequent words in academic speech. Looking at the table, levels in the same row include same vocabularies. As you can see, the ASWL has the high frequency words, which are the most frequent the thousand words of BNC and COCA. And this emphasizes the importance of high frequency words in academic spoken English. The table indicates the potential coverage gained by learners with ASWL, and as you can see, the knowledge of high frequency words affects an understanding of academic spoken English. Based on students' knowledge of high frequency word, their comprehension of academic spoken English varies from 92 to 96%. So, how teachers and course designers use the ASWL to help students with short knowledge of high frequency word? The ASWL can be used for setting learning goals and designing learning materials. In this process, teachers and course designers first identify learners who lack knowledge of high frequency words, second, set appropriate learning goals, and last, select and design learning materials. For identifying learners with insufficient knowledge, Teachers and course designers can use the updated vocabulary levels test mentioned earlier. The article focuses on learners, those having insufficient knowledge of the most frequent 2,000 words, because these students need teachers' more intensive support. Depending on the test score, students are divided into two groups. First, those having not mastered the most frequent 1,000 words, and second, those having mastered the frequent thousand words but need to master from the one thousand first to two thousand the most frequent words. And then teachers and course designers can set relevant learning goals for students by using the ASWL as a guide. There are two possible learning sequences for learners with insufficient vocabulary knowledge. First, the idea process is to build up the 3000 B and C and COCA words step by step before moving on to the relevant ASWL levels. In this process, learners can get knowledge of both general words and academic words. However, considering the limited time of programs, the second process is to go directly to the ASWL level, which is relevant to their current vocabulary knowledge. Since the ASWL words of level 1 and 2 are high frequency words, learners also can establish their knowledge of general vocabularies and acquire important words in academic spoken English. Teachers and course designers also can use the ASWL when they select and design learning materials. For example, they can compare words in transcripts of listening materials with words in ASWL through range or at word profilers program. They can check the occurrences of the ASWL in materials and also can evaluate the reflection degree of academic speech words in materials. Teachers and course designers have to make sure their course programs are able to improve both receptive and productive vocabulary knowledge of students. For this, nation's first standards can be used for guiding the learning materials and activities. 
Another important task of teachers and course designers is raising learners' awareness of the importance of the ASWL. They can make students recognize how often the ASWL words are used in academic spoken English. Students assume some similarity or differences between academic English and general language, and teachers providing research findings as evidence. Also, teachers can encourage students to use the ASWL words as terms for searching, and students can check the words in the British Academic Spoken English Corpus or the Michigan Corpus of Academic Spoken English. This article shows that high-frequency words has more importance in academic spoken English than academic written English through the corpus analysis. The knowledge of high-frequency words is necessary for understanding academic spoken English, but vocabulary task research indicate the lacking word knowledge of EAP students. Therefore, EAP teachers and course designers are required to reconsider the importance of high-frequency words, and they can use the academic spoken word list as a guide for setting program goals and designing course materials. For the limitation of this study, the demand for hand-on materials need to be addressed, and future research should explore it for material development. This is all for my video, and thank you for watching.